Hey there everyone, this is Alex with Level Up Plus VFX, and I created this quick little scene uh, to show you guys this awesome little node preset that I have made for you guys for exporting your Blender animations or renders into Nuke for post-processing. This is a great little plugin because it automates some of the stuff that was a little bit tedious to do uh, by default in Blender, and I have linked the project in the description for free, which will have the node set up for you to install and add to your node presets. Uh, and I'm going to show you how to use it right now. If you have never set up node presets before, go ahead and go to edit, preferences. You're going to want to go to your add-ons tab and type in the word node. And of the three that should show up here, you're going to want to enable node presets. Don't click away yet. Go ahead and hit the arrow and you're going to need to set a preferences directory. This is going to be something like your asset browser uh, file paths. So go ahead and create a folder where you want to store this Blender file that I've linked in the description for you and then it will be referenced every time you open up blender once that's done go ahead and close it and you may need to restart blender in order for it to take effect maybe not i'm not sure but once we've done that go ahead and jump into the compositing tab this is where we're actually going to use this um, the very first thing we're going to need to do though is we need to add more render layers than just the image and the alpha so we're going to go over to the renders layers tab and i'm going to turn on the stuff that i use that's going to be the normal the vector the uv then all these light groups except for the bottom two. Once that's done, this is where this awesome little plugin comes in. If you've ever tried to render out multiple light paths before like this, you've probably know that you have to do a file output node, and then you're gonna have to create an individual you know, layer for every single you know, path that you wanna do. And that takes time, no one has time for that. So just use this preset. Go ahead and type in the word nuke and the nuke auto output should show up. Now you can just put them side by side real close and just connect them all. And this is just automating the process that really, sh there should be an easier way to build this into Blender. I don't know why they haven't, but hey, now you're all set up to export it. So let's go ahead and dive into this auto output by clicking on it and hitting tab, and then it's gonna jump us into here. You can ignore this for now. This is just converting your normals and vector passes into ones that are making Nuke happier. If you don't plan to use them, you don't really need to know them. I'll dive more into this stuff uh, in, in a later video, but really, uh, Blender Bob did a great video on it, so I'll just have that pop up here. Now the final thing you're going to need to do is set out an output path. Uh, so instead of setting your output over here, just set it right here. And that's all there is to it. So a little quick note for actually setting your output path. Uh, I didn't say this in the original recording, so I'm going back and adding it now. When you add your output path, go ahead and set it to your name, a period, and then the amount of frame padding you want. So you do that with hashtags. So for example, if I want it to be 0001, I'm going to do four hashtags and then don't put .exr or .png, just leave it as is and it will create it as an exr file. So go ahead and render this out by either doing render animation or rendering it in command line and then I'll pop over to nuke real quick, which I actually already have open and I'll show you how it looks um, and the differences you get out of denoising in nuke versus denoising in blender. So I actually already have a little example script set up here for you guys. Uh, I'm just going to show you a little bit. I'm not going to go deep into Nuke at all. Uh, this is not a Nuke tutorial, uh, though I will possibly be making some more of these in the future. Uh, let's go ahead and look at our base image. Something you'll notice, the very first thing you do when you look at your image, you're actually seeing something. And people who use Nuke know that normally you have to add a shuffle node and shuffle the combined image uh, pass into RGBA. With this little Blender node preset, you actually don't have to do that. It's already in the RGB files. So that's pretty nice. And then I'm just doing the basic um, light path addition, and then I'm just denoising it. So once we look at the different denoise layers, we get an output that looks something like this. So if I pounce back between the two and we look at them, I'd say that looks pretty good. And just for a little bit of reference, I also rendered out a Blender denoised pass. So something I hate about Blender denoisers is it destroys volumes. So if we look at my denoised version and we look at the Blender denoised version, there's no detail up in this area uh, where there should be. And, you know, for some reason we can see this tree still, but it's just kind of like a blob um, where in my version it's properly occluded and dark. Uh, because it's going through that volume. And yes, there's a little bit of noise in my denoised pass, but I actually like that. You know, obviously it's a lot better than this, which feels like a very clear low sample noise, where this feels a little bit more like film grain. Um, and then obviously you can add grain on top of it. And the benefit of that is you're not getting all these washed out colors 
that you get when you use the blender denoiser, especially in highlights. So if we look at this area over here where there's these reflections, these reflections turn almost like plasticky in Blender's denoiser. But in denoising it in a program like Nuke, where you go layer by layer, you can actually retain a lot of detail in these highlights and you can actually retain full detail of like pieces of this column here that you just lose in the uh, the denoiser built into Blender. So, you know, there's pluses and minuses though. Uh, for example, these leaves get a little too soft, I think, in my denoise pass, um, for my liking at least, but at least they're not just flat now. You know, they have a little bit of variety to their texture, um, but they're not as sharp and they're a little too noisy. But you can obviously refine your denoiser to be less noisy. And that's something like, look at the difference in this texture between my version. Obviously my version is noisier, but it actually feels like it has more texture still than the denoised pass. I think it's just a flavor thing, really. You know, if you like this flavor um, of like the look, you know, it really feels like it's affecting the look of the image um, from the way the ground is lit to just the back back here feeling more hazy. I think that using a third-party program to denoise and do other post effects, of course, um, is definitely my more preferred method. A big pass that I think always deserves, you know, denoising on its own, and it's why I wish Blender allowed you to separate it a little bit more, are these volume passes, because this makes all the difference. You know, if we disable this here and we look at it, it's a very noisy image, but just denoising the volume layer alone doesn't hurt the image uh, as much as having this full denoise on everything does. So if we disable all these reduced noise nodes, except for the volume layer, and look through it, and we compare it to the original, you know, it already looks a lot better, but now we're losing no detail at all. Uh, so all the detail on these objects is be remaining constant, but we're just denoising that volume layer to not be as egregious. So that already goes a long way. And so that's the great thing about this, is it lets you have a lot more control over what you're denoising versus denoising an entire base image and kind of completely changing the look by doing that. So anyway, if you guys found this useful, go ahead and give it a download, give it a shot. Um, if you do like it, go ahead and give me a like on the video. That would be pretty awesome. Either way, I've been Alex from Level Up Plus VFX, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Take care.